Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another new release review video. Uh, today featuring 2324 Opeachy Hockey from Upper Deck. Opeachy being one of the uh, more entry level sets, this particular box was $110 or $109.95, whatever, from the local LCS, and it should be pointed out that uh, that's a 32% jump from last year. This stuff was $75.99, at least at my LCS last year. And uh, yeah, 32% jump because of one guy whose name I'm so sick of saying and so sick of hearing around the hobby that I'm just going to call him that guy from now on. So so we'll just call him that guy in this review. So yeah, he's in here, and uh, therefore, for no other reason than him being in there, the price got jacked up 32%, like I said, at least here. And that's just kind of the way it's going to be going forward for the next year. Unfortunately, I complain about it every single review, how the price went up for no apparent reason, but... That's the uh, state of the hobby as it is. So at least that guy happens to be live in this set. These are his first like real cards, not his like Easter egg or redemptions or anything like that. It's just an actual, his actual cards are in the form of the uh, the venerable marquee rookies, which are in here as well as parallels and all that stuff, which we'll talk about. Entry level set along with like MVP. I like OPG more than MVP. So I always look more, to, look more forward to OPG coming out every year. So it used to always be one of the like early season sets. And then they pushed it back after the pandemic. And the rookie class that includes that guy are live in here as opposed to like McDavid's rookie year where he had to be an update in Series 2. Thankfully, those updates are gone. Standard for Opeachy, at least the last while, 10 cards per pack, 18 packs per box, and 110 bucks, which kind of sucks. It's a little expensive because historically, Opeachy, you're not really going for those expensive cards. It's the, you're just going to get a bunch of cheap cards, build your set. Um, in the last couple of years, they've tried to sort of like up the value by adding more numbered cards and stuff like that. So I don't know if I really like it. I'm sort of a old school guy with my Opeachy. I like the old car crappy cardboard base stock with a picture on it that you get a ton of, right? But times are changing, I guess. I should maybe change with them. I don't know. Anyway, 600 card base set, a whole bunch of marquee rookies in here. So pulling that guy can be a little bit tough. He's definitely not guaranteed to be in every box. That's for sure. So um, this year anyway... So OPG always is sort of a simple set. The uh, you get like similar to Platinum, which is an OPG product, so it makes sense that they're similar. Uh, basically, the base and the base parallels are what you're going for, and then a few inserts in there. But the inserts are usually less appealing than sort of the base parallels in the OPG products. Regular base has less parallels than last year, but the uh, purple is new this year, and you'll get uh, the purple for both the base and the rookies, and uh, some to 49, as well as some of the other usual inserts in here to go with all the uh, standard inserts. You're going to get the patches, which are another OPG mainstay. Those are 1 in 72, manufactured patches, but they're still cool. And then you're going to get other unannounced variations, like wood is always in here. There's like a cherry wood version I've seen as well. Some other inserts, the playing cards, back always. The uh, higher the suit, the harder it is to pull them. Aces are tougher than kings, which are tougher than like the base suit ones, like three, four, whatever. And then there's the premier inserts, which are three per box. Carry over from last year, decent looking cards. And there's a new diamond rainbow version of those, parallel of those, number to 75. So that's new and interesting. And of course, uh, that that guy is on all those cards as well. There's also, like last year and maybe the year before, I don't know, maybe it's been around since as long as uh, Platinum's been around, but the Platinum previews always seem to show up in OPG and they're here again. So you get all the like usual Platinum parallels, uh, but with weird numbering in OPG. They're not exactly the same. So like size, they just don't need as many of each parallel, so it's a lower numbered. So nine cards in that checklist, the Platinum preview checklist, including uh, that guy in his Team Canada jersey, oddly. It's weird to see him in a marquee rookie Team Canada. I don't really understand that. That doesn't make sense to me. His marquee rookie should be as a Chicago rookie, but and the hardest chase in here is the uh, 3D marquee rookie lenticular cards, which are one in 864 packs. Super hard pulls. Those ones go for uh, those ones should go for a lot of money. So there's also the uh, bounty puzzle cards in here, which are one in 96, and the first 25 would get would get an autograph of that guy, uh, but they all 25 of those were claimed as of 4:30 my time on release day. So I hadn't even had, get a chance to open my box, and those are already gone. So forget that. That's pretty good. That's pretty crazy but there you go it's so peachy don't expect to get a whole lot of value out of this it's pretty tough at 110 to get your value back um, at least historically when you pay like 50 bucks for this you basically knew you'd probably get 50 bucks back if you were to sell it but that's just sort of like what you knew going in you weren't really that concerned about it you just she's changed a bit with that guy making everybody go crazy People are buying, like my LCS sold out of this stuff today. He had two cases and a bunch of other boxes, which normally OPG sits on the shelf. Like I can guarantee you, most LCSs probably still have some 20, 21, 22, 21, 22 sitting on the shelf they can't get rid of unless they absolutely blow it out. Two different guys came in and bought cases today. I'm lucky I pre-ordered this or I wouldn't have got it by the time I got there. He had, this was the last box today. So the hobby has gone bonkers over that guy and I just shake my head. Nuge on the cover there. Always happy to see uh, Edmonton Oilers player on the cover. That's not Mc well. Happy to see McDavid. Fine, right? You just get tired of McDavid, but cool to see a different Edmonton Oiler. And uh, as a longtime Oilers fan, I love me some Nuge. For a lot of these sets, it's that guy or bust now. Sadly, for the twenty three twenty four, because their prices are so expensive, you pretty much need to hit them to get your money back. But 
personally, whatever, if I don't pull them, OPG for me is just about fun. It's sort of like a nostalgia thing too, because obviously the two cards that I opened a ton of when I was a kid in the junk wax here was OPG and Tops. So very fond memory, very fond memories of the OPG stuff. That cards there are pretty similar. And of course there's uh, always retail versions of these blasters. That guy, from what I've seen, seems to, seems to show up a couple per case, so even his regular ones are a little tough to pull and uh, pull out of a blaster, so he's not, uh, he's not going to be, that guy's not going to be that easy to pull, unfortunately. So if you're buying it hoping to, be a little tougher. There's the uh, base card, so decent design. A little more, it's not bad. It's a slightly higher quality base stock than they had been using in the past. I always like the ones that have like the blank or the bare cardboard back, the raw, sure, sorry, the raw cardboard back was always my favorite for Opeachy, so I think it'd be cool if they went back to that. The retros have that because that's the way I always wear, so. Coming home to land, yeah. So there's our first marquee rookie of Jacob Pelche. Decent card. Again, these cards, for everybody not named that guy, not a ton of value, just is what it is. So, yeah, nothing fancy. It's just the base design with marquee rookie slapped on there. Pretty simple. Marquee to renom. Interesting that Opeachy always has French on it, but other sets don't do the French. For whatever reason, Opeachy just always has. So there you go, and they're here in the VR. Set that aside. A little bit of color variation. It looks a little nicer than the usual. They just had a solid blue border. It's kind of simple. Reasonably centered so far. The centering looks okay. And then our one per pack retro. And more base. You get a lot of base. So it's all about. It's a humongous base set. So if you are a base set builder, there is a lot to do there. So. All right, pack number two here. So there's all star. Yes, yeah, so you're always gonna get. You're either gonna get a marquee rookie or an all star. The short prints per pack. So there's Chandler Stevenson, 2023 all star. Braden Shen on the blue. And we're gonna need the retro. Of course, this is an update holdover set, so a lot of the pictures don't make sense. Player may not play for the team anymore. He's moved to a new team. Sometimes it's like a couple years. They still have the guy playing for like Brett Kulak, so like on Montreal. He's been with Edmonton for like two years now. So that's kind of weird. There's also short prints you gotta look for. Um, photo variations I don't know if they say it on the back but I'll have to look for have to look for those if they say anything on the back so second year Marco Rossi and they're much better there the year this year Jujar so our first playing card of Patty Kane and then behind that we got Logan Thompson all-star and Nick Paul in the retro have to check the that's right also have to check the backs of the retros because you get blank backs which are pretty rare there's only like between five and ten of the blank back retros so you got to check those out too there's like rare, like red one of ones that are hand numbered. So you to watch out for those as well. I always do like Opeachy. It's always nice to just get a bunch of cards. All right, so we got a platinum preview by the look of it. Is that what this is? Or is this a premiere? This might be a premiere. Um, bro, just premiere. Okay, so regular premiere of Linus Allmark. So the team color match that one there. So it's a regular one. There's only the one parallel of these, the rainbow. Rainbow whatever it is. So Linus, and then we got Dry Settle All-Stars and... Eberly, who's on the trade block this year by the sounds of it. Could even end up in Edmonton, which would be crazy. On the retro, not blank back. All right. Second year, Michelli there. Interesting to see these guys in their second year. So, Billy Sweezy. And we got our black black retro there, which would be numbered behind that. I think it's Jeff Petrie, so that's not the special. So, Billy Sweezy. Or Joel Armia. Billy Sweezy, not exactly the um, Columbus rookie that I wanted to get there. Obviously, Fantilli would be the guy. So, there's Billy Sweezy. So, the... Just a regular marquee rookie, and then we got Joel Armia. This will be numbered out of 100. So there's our numbered card. Armia numbered. Looks good, actually. I have to say, for a black card, the quality on that is really good. Like, the edges look perfectly fine. You don't see that a lot of times with black cards. Like, the, that uh, that guy draft short printed card from Series 1. That's cards like hardly ever 10. They look terrible. So, credit where credit's due. The quality looks okay on this stuff. So, all right. So, oh, well, we got a puzzle piece here. So, would have some value, obviously um, would have had more value had I like been able to open this stuff first thing and like list it right away. They were selling for like a couple hundred bucks. They were selling pretty good. So I don't know, they may still sell for a couple hundred bucks. I don't know how many of the bounty program cards there really are and how many they're doing. So possible still have some value. Who knows? They're hard to hit though. It's one ninety six. So happy to pull that. There's my cousin Vinny there on the base marquee rookie. That's a PC card. So we'll take that. And then Piotr Kachetkov, not a blank back. Lots of packs, just always fun. So we got some red insert here, red parallel here. So Joel Tisdale, Montreal's also got a ton of rookies. And a lot of these guys are summer updates, so like sometimes you'll get some of the uh, Series 2 guys from the year before. Joel Tisdale, that's honestly not a name I've heard. 
And then we got Jakob Silverberg on the red. It's a red parallel there. Tougher to hit, but nothing special because it's just uh, the base guys. And then Derek Grant. Not blank back. Stormy again. Dylan Holloway, second year Holloway. Another guy, PC. And Berger in second year. So a lot of these guys. Interesting to see them on their second year cards. Try to point out the guys who aren't on their team anymore. Zaka, I don't think Zaka, I think Zaka's gone too, right? He's in Zaka's been gone for years. So, all right, so we got our numbered card here. So we got Nico Shostak at All-Star, and this is a goalie of some kind. This is Matt Murray, the other Matt Murray. So that's an interesting one. Those are two uh, 350s. That's the basic parallel, or basic foil board. Green foil board, I think it's just foil board, shiny one. So the other Matt Murray, that's kind of interesting. It's always funny every time his name gets mentioned. Every time his name gets mentioned. I have to go by the other Matt Murray. So that's kind of a cool one. We'll take it. It's actually decent, I think. Yeah. Tommy Merlin, no blank back. Although that is... That was upside down for a second. It's not. So, interesting, rookie. Again, if you don't hit that guy, unfortunately, minimal value for the most part. They are a very nice card for coming out of Opeachy. They always do. Lately, they've been doing a nice job on the parallels. It still feels weird to have them come out of Opeachy, but... Yeah, so Yamamoto, obviously, now in Seattle. Has been for... Two years now, I think. I can't remember what he got traded, but at least Goudreau's on the right team. Bears, he... Where did he end up signing? Yeah, I think Bears, maybe, maybe Bears is right. So we got Adam Ginning on the marquee rookie. And behind that, a blue of Brady Shea. And then Jonas Ziegenthaler. Retro. So the Blues. The Blues are nothing special. If you get that guy, it's still worth something. Such a humongous base set, even though the Blues are technically pretty common. It's, you know, there's 600 of them. 600 subjects in the Blues. It's pretty tough to hit that guy, so. Again, I have no expectation of hitting him. Which will be my motto for all 23, 24 products is that uh, probably won't hit him. That's just probably out of focus that whole time there. Sorry about that. So we got Moser, Tristan Jari, Goldman. So we got another one. Logan Couture on the five. And this is a, another marquee rookie. Nope, another all-star card. So, Jason Robertson and Logan Thompson. No blank backs either. So, so far pretty pretty basic on the inserts. All-star snubbed Zach Hyman. Zach Hyman definitely should have gone to the all-star game. He probably would have tried on, like, Kucherov. At least Kucherov went on, like, Ovi. All right. So, still looking for some better marquee rookies. Drew Hellison on the marquee rookie. So, so far the marquee rookies, for the most part, I've been pretty weak. Got a Liam O'Brien, an enforcer there. It's the time you see him attempting to punch people in the face on the blue. And another guy who's usually doing something stupid on the ice, Jacob Truba. Doing dumb hits. We're already down to just a few packs, so. So far, pretty weak box, but really it's OPG, so is it that bad? It's pretty, it's pretty standard for OPG. It should be a pretty standard box normally. Had that guy never been born. All right, so we got another Novak. This feels like it's... This might be a... Pre no, I think it's another Premier card. It's very deceiving. So this is probably just a Premier card, so I'm not going to slow roll it because it's just uh, Austin Matthews on the Premier. So, yeah, there you go. Standard Premier, not the fancy one or anything. So, brace concert. And there's Fraser Minton, who... Uh, another Maple Leafs prospect. And uh, playing for the Saskatoon Blades. He was one of their big, big trades this year as they push for... The, it's so weird that the Blades are the, the one of the best teams in the CHL. Best team in the dub, at least last time I looked... They've been awful like my entire life, so it's very, very weird for them to be good. I don't really know how to feel about it. I'm not a Blades fan or anything, but it's just odd that they're actually good. So, And he was one of their big acquisitions this year, and as far as I know, he's been good. So, decent marquee rookie. It's always good to get a uh, Toronto marquee rookie. Colin Miller, standard retro. So, yeah, Adam Ernie now on the Edmonton Oilers and got waived, I think, recently. So I feel like he's with the Condors now. Amstrom, Suzuki All-Star, another blue, Jason Robertson All-Star blue, so we got the regular All-Star and blue variant, and there's Jack Roslovic, regular back. Alright, it's another playing card, Jonathan Huberdeau, Let's see, Ricky Ricky of Alteria Morella, very, very depth rookie, and another rookie. Okay, well, Arthur Silovs hasn't had a ton of playing time. I guess that was a blank back, but um, now that uh, Demko has been playing so good, Silovs hasn't really. Well, Demko maybe when Demko gets hurt. If Demko gets hurt, Silovs will see some more ice time. But 
He's been okay. He's nothing great, though. All right, so all told, so far, one of the weaker boxes I've seen. Not hitting the one guy aside, even the other rookies I've hit have been a bit weak. <laughs> Campbell. He may make his triumphant return. Hard to say. All right, so premier card. It's probably just a standard premier card. We get three, so we're due for one. So Campbell maybe comes back. He's been playing good in the AHL, but time will tell. Skinner's been playing so good, and actually um, Pickard's been fine. So so uh, regular premiere of Phil Forsberg, one of the best mustaches in the league. And behind that, Matthew Poitras. Decent one there. Decent for Team Canada. And then Logan Cooley. All right, well, one of the better rookies again from that crop. Yeah, highly, highly touted. He's been good for them. Decent numbers in Minnesota there. Yeah, very good numbers in Minnesota, so... They like him in Arizona, so another cool rookie on the retro. We'll take that. So again, a box like this just shows how hard it is at 110 bucks to get anywhere close to your money back. If this was 50 bucks, like it should be, still be hard, but at least you're not. It's not as annoying, you know. You don't care. You just open up some nice cards, which I still like. Hodry on the on the All Star. We got a blue of Steven Stamkos and Ethan Bear. So lots of misses today. Two packs. What are we left here? What are we owed? Hopefully he still hit like a platinum preview or something like that. Just for the sake of would make it more interesting to hit those cards because no patch, no nothing. Been kind of boring other than... Sadly, the puzzle piece is probably the coolest card we've hit so far and that's boring because one, I hate bounty programs and uh, two, it's, it's already done anyway, so... Value has been half. There's Ranton and All-Star, so we got a purple parallel of Brady Shea and Yanni Hakampa. So another... We're all boring pack. Purples are numbered, so 49, that's the new parallel there. But unfortunately, just of a veteran and not exactly a super highly sought after one. Again, the quality looks great, though. Like these cards, the corners are crisp. No chipping or denting or anything like that. So I'm thinking about a simple paper stock because it just holds up. So hit a low number parallel, which is nice. All right, last pack here. Don't have my hopes up overall. It doesn't bug me as much with Opeachy that it's not a great box. It's just... You get a ton of cards, you get some inserts, and you got a playing card, so. Nothing too great here, so one last shot at Coronado, a reasonable rookie. Jordan Martinuk on the retro, not blank back. And Joker, okay, well, there's Bowie Joker, so those are the hardest to hit. Those are actually fairly tough pulls, so maybe, and people love this freak. I don't know what it is. Greedy's a way better mascot, but people seem to like Bowie for some reason. So there's Bowie on the Joker. So that's the second Joker I've hit out of... Um, I hit him out of one of my boxes of previous years. So fairly tough to hit. So there's something there. And Coronado's a decent rookie. Calgary's got a couple in this set. He's up there. All right, so recap. Took a look through all the base cards. I don't know what the hell's an image variation. Nothing seemed obvious, and I don't think they're marked. So probably some I missed. Whatever. Not worth anything anyway, but... So the retros, you're going to get a ton of retros. Cooley and Seelovs were nice. You had some rookies there, so great. Decent ones, I guess. Um, Cooley's definitely better than Seelovs, so it's okay. That, Armia numbered card. Black number cards, these are probably the most common ones. But not exactly the best player in the hobby. And then uh, lots and lots of inserts, is what you get with OPG, a ton of inserts. And again, these ones pretty much all... We're all misses, unfortunately. Really nothing good there on these ones. Just standard. You get a ton of the... Too many too many vets. Especially when you're looking for one particular rookie. Or just rookies in general. Marquee rookies that we did hit. Sorry, don't want that in there. Get out of there, Kadri. Trying to sneak in there, you dick. All right, so Coronado's decent. Potro's decent. A couple that, like, legit... Sorry, was terrible. A couple that, like, legit... Terrible. Minton was all right. Helson and Gang, sorry, but not great. Murray, the, probably the nicest. Nah, hard to say. Obviously, hitting a a numbered one is nice. It'd be nice if it was a little lower numbered, but Murray's at least notable, even if it's just his name. A couple of these other guys. And I'm always happy to hit Cousin Vinny because I PC him, so that's great. So two Flames, so two decent Flames cards, but just such a minimal value for the non-that guy cards. So it's kind of sad when the... Uh, Two best cards in the box are a puzzle piece bounty program. Like I said, I hate the bounty, so great. Although probably still, hopefully still has a little bit of value. And the uh, the Bowie mascot card for the Joker playing card, which is kind of funny. So hopefully also has a little bit of value. So it makes some of my money back, but never really concerned with Opeachy. Normally because it's so cheap. So it sucks that this year I kind of want to get some money back because it was 32% more than it had to be just because one guy. So there we go. So nothing too special there, unfortunately. Miss the miss the guy you want to see, but that's the way she goes sometimes. So um, 
at least in my case, I only opened one box and didn't hit them. I have a feeling there's going to be people out there that open like a case and hit one or two of them if they're lucky. Um, that's what you get. That's a risky run when you open a case or something like that. So anyway, there we go, guys. Hope you enjoyed that one. And uh, thanks for watching. Stay tuned. We've got Clear Cut coming up next week, which is a unfortunate 21, 22, 22, 23 mix one, but one of the riskiest products you can buy. So that at least should make for an interesting video. So we'll see you then. Thanks for watching. Make sure you hit that like button, subscribe, do all that stuff, and we'll see you in the next one.